Nigeria and welcome to the program The Eagle. The Eagle is a weekly program created to bring you activities of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC. My name is Aisha Gambari and I am Aisha Mohammed. Thank you for staying tuned. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. On our lineup today, Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Lamarty, has called the members of the public to be cautious of the modus and prime die of fraudsters in order not to fall victims of their antics. Lamarty made the appeal while presenting Red Alert on Scam, a special publication of the EFCC to the press at the EFCC headquarters in Abuja. Also to come, Justice Adebukola Banjoko of a Federal Capital Territory High Court sitting in Gudu Abuja has warned a former governor of Plateau State, Joshua Dare, that her court will no longer tolerate any frivolous application intended to delay trial. We will also bring you a report on the arraignment of 23 suspected illegal oil bunkers before Justice Ibrahim Buba of the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos for offenses bordering and conspiracy, illegal dealing and storage of petroleum products. Please stay tuned with us as we take you on another short break. We will be right back. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> What is it? Please, keep to I got your telephone call. Every time I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Juva Magadam. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you owe contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs on pipe on water. I embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to fear the have a special man that you don't of EMCC. I chose to be here to work to stop the other people's money. EMCC, as soon as they captured them, threats to prison. Jail. 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 Ah! Are you? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. We know that people are going to die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EFCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Glad to have you back. 23 suspected illegal oil bunkers have been dragged before a federal high court sitting in Ikoi, Lagos, for offenses bordering on conspiracy, illegal dealing, and storage of petroleum products. Just as another set of 11 are currently facing similar charges before a federal high court, Worry Delta State. Kamila Gaby has the report. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arraigned 23 suspected illegal oil bunkers before Justice Ibrahim Buba of the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos on a three-count charge bordering on conspiracy, illegal dealing and storage of petroleum products, an offence contrary to and punishable under Section 19, Subsection 6 of the Miscellaneous Offences Act Cap M17 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria. The accused persons pleaded not guilty to all the charges when they were read to them. Justice Buba thereafter granted bail to the accused persons in the sum of 50 million naira each and one shirty in like sum. 
The surety must be a resident of Lagos with a landed property within the jurisdiction of the court. In a related development, the Commission also arraigned 11 suspected oil thieves and their vessel, MT Petroity, before Justice M.S. Abubakar of the Federal High Court Wari Delta State on a two-count charge bordering on conspiracy and illegal dealing in petroleum products. The suspects, which include Ephraim Akpan, Agadagba Ochuko, Clement Tommy, Oyayefa Abone, Boso Kereto, Dereye Hari, Loki Abone, Dapo Obadare, Friday Ibude, Ebi Ekokeme, and Vincent Elayaga pleaded not guilty to the two-count charge. The accused persons and their vessel were arrested on May 23, 2014 by officers of the Nigerian Navy following a tip-off around a former oil terminal in Delta State with about 272 metric tons of substance suspected to be crude oil and handed over to the EFCC for further investigations and prosecution. One of the shirties, the ruling said, must have landed properties within the jurisdiction of the court. Welcome back. In another development, no fewer than 45 members of the network of anti-corruption agencies in West Africa paid a facility tour visit to the EFCC Academy, Karu Abuja, to assess the facilities at the institution. Ayo Olowonihi, commandant of the academy, who received the visitors, told them that the institute we started as a one-block academy has grown, becoming the resource base of the commission where cadets and newly employed officers undergo training at the point of entry. Thauma Eki brings you the report. Ayo Olowoni said the academy has updated facilities to host conferences, seminars and trainings for anti-corruption personnel, not only in Nigeria, but the Africa sub-region. He also emphasized that the academy has the capacity to accommodate over 180 trainees at a go. The commandant informed the visitors that 85 cadets are presently undergoing training, 68 of whom he said have gone to citizenship and leadership training institute in Jos, Plateau State. Among the facilities inspected by the visitors were the hostels, library, ICT center, lecture rooms, gymnasium, 380-seat amphitheater, and canteen. At the academy here, we run training for new new officers, whether they are senior or junior. Uh, 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 staff with the yes, initial formation. Uh, so these are cadet officers for law enforcement training. Okay. Isofu Boreima, President Network of Anti-Corruption Agencies in West Africa, who led the visitors, said he was impressed by the facilities at the academy. Boreima, who is also the chairman, High Authority Against Corruption and Related Offences, Halsia, Niger Republic, reiterated the importance of collaboration between anti-corruption agencies across the sub-region as an impetus to the crusade against corruption. And this is a good, uh, a good class Everyone has our law and, uh, uh, and to strengthen our I think uh, we, we can uh, seriously uh, see how we must do to, to make our, our population in our country come here and uh, enforce themselves. The visit was a follow-up to the initial working visit by Halsia to the Commission in January where it requested the chairman of the commission, Ibrahim Lamrode, to afford Halsia the opportunity to train its staff at the EFCC Academy. Selma A.K., reporting for The Eagle. Tell you truly it ain't easy now I feel the pressure to find something wrong 
his data Just to catch a maga He could have been my father Or someone oh, else's brother Still talking about interagency relationship, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, recently hosted some cadets of the Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA. The cadets who were on a learning visit said they were here to tap into the huge resources of the commission. While receiving the cadets, Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Lamuri, who was represented by the Commandant of the EFCC Academy, Ayo Olonihi, says, the fight against economic and financial crimes requires concerted and collaborative efforts. Golden Ago is our guide. Lamorde said he was delighted to receive the cadets and congratulated them for choosing to come and learn from the EFCC. He told the visitors that the EFCC, in its effort to produce the required manpower needed to deliver its mandate, ensures that its cadets receive the best available training. We know nothing other than the things we learn. When the brain stops learning, it begins to die. Abraham Ewiakbafe of the Computer Science Department who led the cadets to the commission on behalf of the NDA commandant said they were in EFCC to learn how it has applied modern technology in the fight against economic and financial crimes. He said the exercise would make the cadets better equipped as military officers upon completion of their cadet training. Indeed, lectures that will enhance the cadets' knowledge about the workings of the EFCC were presented by the officers of the commission. Geoffrey Okolori of the Forensic Unit in his paper, Overview of Forensic and International Standard, captured the importance of forensic in unraveling crimes and fraud. Another paper titled Challenges of Investigating Transnational Cybercrime in West Africa, a case study of Nigeria, presented by Dane White, an operative of the Commission, enumerated the various internet frauds and how the Commission tries to nip them in the board by deploying technology and well-trained personnel. Felicia Bot Timothy of the Public Affairs Department in her paper, EFCC and its Preventive Strategies, educated the cadets on EFCC's efforts in sensitizing the people against economic and financial crimes. Golden Argo reporting for The Eagle. You're still watching the program, The Eagle. Justice Adebu Kola Banjoko of the Federal Capital Territory High Court in Gudu, Abuja, as one the former governor of Plateau State, Joshua Darie, that her court will no longer tolerate any frivolous application intended to delay trial. Darie is standing trial on money laundering charge to the tune of over 1 billion naira. The report is presented once again by Kamile Gavi. Please stay tuned. At the resumed hearing of the case, counsel to Darie, J.S. Paul, S.A.N., told the court that his client is indisposed and could not make it to court. He told the court that sometime in February this year, Darius' 90-year-old father was kidnapped. He said in the process of securing his release, Darius fell on a rock and broke his leg, and he is yet to recover. 
In the circumstance, the defense asked for an adjournment. In opposition, counsel to EFCC, OA Atolagbe, who stood in for Rotimi Jacobs, SAN, urged the court to discountenance the defense's application, saying it has become the habit of the accused to always develop some rare illness before the date set for his trial. Atolagbe went further that the accused has never appeared before the court since 2012. Displeased by the conduct of the accused, Justice Banjoko said she would not hesitate to open a day-to-day -day trial on the accused to ensure speedy determination of the case. Since his arraignment on a 23-count charge on July 13, 2007, at the Federal High Court Abuja, Dairie has been employing all means known to law to frustrate his trial. Following his plea of not guilty to the charges preferred against him, the trial court had set aside November 13, 2007 for the prosecution to open its case. On the date fixed for trial to commence, the ex plateau governor brought a motion before the court praying for an order to quash the 23-count charge preferred against him on diverse grounds, including lack of locus standi to prosecute him and jurisdiction to hear and determine the case. Daria's application was dismissed by the court on December 10, 2007. He proceeded on appeal which also suffered the same fate on June 17, 2010. Not satisfied, the former governor proceeded to the Supreme Court on July 13, 2010. The Apex Court, in its judgment delivered on February 27, 2015, found the appeal to be lacking in merit and consequently dismissed it and ordered the court to commence expeditious trial of the former governor. Justice Banjoko has adjourned the case to July 1, 2015. In a similar circumstance, the trial of a former governor of Gombe State, Danju Mogoji, continued before Justice B. O. Kadri of the Federal High Court, sitting in Gombe, Gombe State, with the lead defense counsel, Adeni Akintola SAN, cross-examining a prosecution witness, Solomon Okoti, an assistant superintendent of police, on some of the exhibits tendered by the prosecution. However, prosecuting counsel Wahab Shetu objected to the defense's line of questioning, accusing Akintola SAN of abandoning the substance of the charge and preoccupying himself with matters peripheral. The former governor who is standing trial alongside three others is being prosecuted by the EFCC over allegations of mismanagement and diversion of over 50 billion Naira state funds. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> I got a telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah, my God. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you all contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I am right. the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to fear the have a special man that you don't know of EMCC. I chose to be here to do to talk to other people money. EMCC. As soon as they captured them, threats to prison. Chief. Yeah. Yeah. Jail. Jail. Ah. Are you? Huh? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are getting die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Glad to have you back. There are several antics employed by fraudsters to defraud their victims in order to educate and enlighten the public about the activities of this element. The EFCC Media and Publicity Unit recently compiled a collection of the modus operandi of fraudsters in a publication called Red Alert on Scam. The special publication was presented to the public by the EFCC chairman Ibrahim Lamarty during a press briefing at his office in Abuja. Rahim Agambo brings us more. Chairman Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC Ibrahim Lamarty has called on members of the public to be cautious of the modus operandi of fraudsters in order not to fall victim of their antics. Lamarty made the appeal while presenting red alert on scam a special publication of the EFCC to the press in his office. He expressed concern over the rate in which vulnerable members of the public, especially youths, fall victim of all manners of fraud. 
The one that is becoming commonplace is employment scam. Many of our youth, desperate to get employment, have fallen into the hands of fraudsters who dupe them on the, of the little cash at, uh, their, at their disposal. Many agencies of government are targeted by syndicates of fraudsters who send out false notices of recruitment and go ahead to demand fees from unsuspecting members of the public to process their applications. Others demand money to help secure employment for victims. Many of you will recall the touching story of Mary Ehe Kenacho, a blind teacher who was swindled by a gang of fraudsters who cared less about her situation, deceiving her in believing that they could help her, help her son gain employment with one of the major oil companies in the country. The government had succeeded in putting the innocent woman in a state of despair, having successfully swindled the blind teacher of her hard earned money until the EFCC came to her assistance. He said the fraudsters go as far as creating website purporting to be a portal for employment processing. Such will include a phone number which the job seekers uh, are told to call. As soon as the unsuspecting job seeker calls, the fraudsters begin to make financial demands requesting the caller to deposit money in particular bank accounts or bank accounts because sometimes they do several bank accounts. Two fraudsters, Iyoha Omen and Imomo Osigwe, who have been arrested by the EFCC, used this dubious technique to swindle unsuspecting job seekers into believing that the Federal Fire Service was recruiting for 2015. They put two mobile phone numbers on the internet, 08093759455 and 08066785650 as the employment provider contact numbers. And as soon as they are contacted, they begin to make financial demands in return for helping to secure the job uh, from the fire service. Subsequently, the fire service subsequently petitioned the FCC uh, saying it was not recruited. And we are on to the track of these two men. The EFCC boss warned prospective job seekers to be wary of people who offer to get them jobs and always endeavor to verify information by contacting the agencies concerned. Red Alert on Scam is an initiative of Media and Publicity Unit of the Commission. Conceived as an enlightenment publication to educate members of the public on the antics of fraudsters with a view to helping them avoid falling victims of fraud. Rahima Gambo reporting for The Eagle. Aisha. Yes, Aisha. Have you read the publication Red Alert on Scam? Yes, I've read that book. Okay, I actually called for it while the program was going on, so we discussed about it. Yes, I've read this book, and I tell you what, it's a very beautiful innovation. It's very informative and educating. A section of the book which caught my attention was the one that has to do with one guy who was in a mole. I'm sure you know mole, those yeah. big yellow big buses, buses in Lagos. In Lagos yeah. He was in the mole, and he was hard calling someone, hello? Please, I'm in Johannesburg. I need 2,000 rands to, to, to take a next slide back to Nigeria. I'm stranded. And I was like, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Many of such circumstances abound, Aisha. Did you read the section where they talked about the emergency fraud where people use, I think it's emotional blackmail. Yes, yes, yes. They call yes. you to tell you that your relation is um, hospitalized or had an accident, accident or something. Accident, exactly, yes. And that they need help from you, money. Yes, yes. You know, you know I, what they do is, Aisha, they capitalize on that moment. You know, when they tell you a loved one is involved in an accident, you get disturbed. Yeah. And so they capitalize on that to extort money from you. They just yeah. said, please, the person needs to be taken to the hospital or we are doctors and nurses. We need to give first aids or something and we need some monies to be deposited. Yeah. It's really We just very hope, funny. well, Aisha, it is our hope that the public will be more vigilant and not fall for these scams. Oh, yes, Aisha, you, you're, you're right. To be forewarned it's is to, to be, be forearmed. Yeah. With that, we'll call it a day on today's edition of The Eagle. Please join us same time next week for another interesting package. To be part of this program, please send your contributions to info at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at official efcc or official efccng at gmail.com. You can also like our page on facebook.com forward slash official efcc or follow us on Twitter at official efcc. And to watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official efcc. My name is Aisha Gamberi. God bless Nigeria. And I am Aisha Mohammed, hoping to see you next week. Goodbye.